Hey guys, this is Anne Marie, Ball Girl Will Travel, and today I'm going to tell you three ways that you can save money buying luxury items. So, I'm Anne Marie, Ball Girl Will Travel, and I like to talk about travel, especially solo travel for black women over 40, and how important it is for self care. And I also love to talk and share my style and fashion tips with my followers. So, if you're interested in travel and you're interested in style and fashion, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when my videos go live. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about three things that I do to save money when I buy luxury items. So if you've been following me for a while, you know I have a love of luxury handbags particularly and shoes. And sometimes I pay full price for them, but I prefer not to because save money. And also because not all these bags always retain their value. I do try to stick to brands that do but sometimes i buy something simply because i just love it and i'm not thinking about resale value because i don't buy my bags necessarily to sell them i sometimes do but i don't buy my bags to sell them so i like to save money when i'm buying it on the front end if i can so the one of the ways i'll start with number one is i buy a lot of my uh high-end luxury items especially my handbags and sometimes shoes um when I travel and you guys know I travel a lot I've been to over 40 countries and I like to travel and when I travel I like to shop and when I shop I like to buy luxury items especially handbags and shoes because in the European Union and some other countries you can get your taxes back sometimes up to 8 to 10 percent um, taxes back on the items that you buy so I figure why buy them in the United States if I'm gonna be traveling I always try to buy them overseas. So the, one of the ways, first way, and you've seen, I've done videos about that. I'll link a video in this video um, where I've talked about it. And I've also written blog posts about it. And I'll link that in the description that explains exactly what I do and how you go about it, right? So that's the first way that you can do it. It's just, if you're traveling abroad, especially if you're traveling in the European Union, go to the high end place and buy it. I find it's, you get better prices as well as you get your taxes back if you buy Ita Italian designers in Italy, you buy French designers in France, you buy English designers in London, and so on. So just that's another thing to keep in mind, okay? Um, because in fact, some of these brands do have sales, quiet as it's kept, and some of them, because what you're paying in the U.S. includes markups relevant to customs, taxes, and other things, when you are buying it in the country of origin, you may not be paying those things and you also get your taxes back at the airport when you're leaving the European Union. So that's a really great way to save money on items. So this summer, I visited um, Italy and Greece. And while I was in Italy, I bought myself a couple of things. And while I was in Greece, I also bought a couple of things. I sprained my ankle, so, you know, couldn't go to Mykonos and Santorini. There's nothing else for me to do, so I went shopping. Probably did more shopping than I would have if I hadn't sprained my ankle, but I digress. Anyway, so I'm going to first show you a couple of things that I got that I really love that I got from um, Greece when I was in Greece in September. So the big get for me on this trip was this Gucci, um, I believe this is the Soho. I'm gonna look it up and tell you exactly what the name is. I'll put it in the comment, the exact correct name. This is, this is a variation of the original Soho. Um, and I'll put the original, the name of it here. But I, I saw this bag when I went to Vegas in July to um, see Usher. And I actually bought myself the orange one, which is this one. Really love this. And I got the matching sandals. And I saw the, the silver one and I thought it was nice, but... I didn't want to buy it because I already knew I was paying, you know, the premium, the bag that I was, you know, getting, not getting taxes, anything. I was paying like premium to get that bag. So when I was in Greece, I went to Greece to look for, I went to Greece to look for these sneakers, right? And I recently did a video, I'll show, there's a clip, I'm going to show you a clip of me in these sneakers. I love them. The name is on the screen. I saw um, an influencer, Janae Naylor, in them, loved them, knew I wanted to get them, but knew I did not want to get them in the States. So I literally went to Gucci looking for these sneakers. So when I went into the store, I saw this bag, 
but not in this color. I had seen it in Vegas, but they didn't have it in this color. And I asked the young lady if they had the silver. And she said they did not. But she brought the sneakers out. I tried them on and I really liked them. So I went ahead and had her ring up the sneakers for me. And, you know, she got my passport, filled out the forms, everything, gave it to me. Um, and then while I was also in Greece, I saw these shoes. I saw these and I tried them on in the store. It was a bit painful because my feet was really swollen. So I really could only try on the right side because my left side was swollen, but I loved these. But I was like, you know, I only came for the sneakers. Let me stay on my budget because I knew there was somewhere else I wanted to go. There's something else I was looking for. So I left these there, which I actually, it turned out okay. But in retrospect, you know, considering but i ended up making out and i'll tell you how i ended up getting it for a good price anyway in out, outside of the U, in the u.s from the u.s um well from this side of the world so i saw these tried on one of them couldn't try on the other one because my ankle issue didn't buy it so i got the sneakers and the young lady um was really nice she was really really nice the service in that gucci store was very very good um so I left and I actually went around the corner and went to get, you know, a little bite to eat because I was a little tired. My feet were tired, were, were, you know, starting to throb and sit down. While I was there, the young lady sent me a message on WhatsApp because, of course, when they ring you up, they get your contact information. I'm in the Gucci system. I've bought many purchases from them. So she sent me a, a message on WhatsApp on my phone number and she said, hey, when I went in the back, I found that we did have one of the silver bag. We only have one. If you would like it, I will hold it for you. So when I was finished eating, I walked back around the corner and I got the bag, right? And so that was a big get for me because, you know, I got my, um, I think it was 8% tax I got back in Greece. I'll double check it, but I think that's what I got. Then I went across the street to Prada and I bought this. So I went to Prada and I bought this baseball hat. Um, I had seen it online. I wanted it. I am a collector of baseball hats because, you know, I'm bald. So I wear hats a lot, protect my head from the sun, protect my head when the fall um, and winter months come. I wear hats all the time because I catch head colds very easily because I don't have hair on my head. So I saw this hat. I really liked it. Um, and so I went across to Prada. They, had the, they only had one left and I got the hat that they had. So I also got this and back tax refund on that. So then the other place that I had wanted to go and planned to go um, when I came to back to Europe, because I didn't do this when I had come in August, I was in Europe, in Italy, um, in August, I went to London, Paris, Italy. Um, and I bought a couple things and I'll show you those things in a minute. But I did not um, think to look for the hat. I knew I wanted the hat, but I did not have time. I just didn't make the time to um, go to Prada. I remember walking past Prada and I didn't go. I was with a friend and I didn't go in. So I didn't look for the hat, but I got this in, in, in Greece. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, and then I went to Dior and at Dior, I finally got the bag that I have wanted since I was probably 35 years old, probably my early thirties might've been even before my son was born, but definitely when my son was little. I really wanted this bag. I have wanted a Dior saddle bag for a really long time. And I knew I wanted a leather one. I didn't want the canvas with the logo. I really am not, I'm really cutting back on the logos. If I do do logos, I like them to be more subtle. Um, even though this isn't terribly subtle, but to me it is, but I don't like, I don't like the bags with the logos all over it anymore, anymore, unless it's Vuitton. If it's Vuitton, I'm here for the logo. Anything else I prefer leather, um, and that the logo be a little understated if there's a logo. So I knew I didn't want the one with Dior all over it. I wanted a leather bag. Um, so I went over there. I looked at several bags. I got this one. Um, I really like it. I haven't actually used it yet. I will soon. Um, it doesn't hold a lot, but it holds your purse. It holds the things, the essential things that I would need this for. Cause I probably primarily use this for evening bags. It's not something I would use during the day. So, um, I really love it a lot. It comes with a shoulder strap. 
some of the um the logo smaller ones don't come with the shoulder the shoulder the crossbody but if you know me i am a crossbody girl because i travel so much i like my purse to be across my body in front of me where i can have my hand on it i don't like to wear my bag on my shoulder like this unless i'm going out at night with my friends or something like that in a really controlled environment i like to have a shoulder strap so I like this model also, the color, it's suede inside. It's a really beautiful handbag and it was beautifully packaged. It smelled divine. Um, they put some perfume or something in the packaging, it's beautiful. But I don't keep boxes, I don't keep packaging. I'm not one of these people who saves all the boxes. The way my life is, I don't have time to be storing all those things. So I kept the bag, I have the bag, the dust bag. I always keep, usually keep my bags um, in dust bags um, when I'm not using them. Um, a lot of the time so I have the bag but I got rid of the box but it was very beautifully packaged it was one of the prettiest packaging I've, I've gotten from a store really pretty and it smelled beautiful and it smelled beautiful for a really long time um, even after I got rid of the, the box I kept the, the packaging that was in it and the bag and it smelled great for like I don't know what perfume that was but it smelled really really good so I got this bag of the Dior also got the VAT tax back on this and when I was in um, Paris, I got this bag. So this is the Loewe mini puzzle bag. Um, I like this bag a lot. It's small, and I knew I wanted a small red bag. I carried a um, Gucci Soho, the original Soho um, like camera bag for years and years and years. I think I bought it in 2016 or 2017. I've had it for a while. It's pretty beat up. It's been all over the world. Some of this, the seaming thing is coming apart. The leather is like rubbing, rubbing down and it's, it's coming apart. I still like it. I'm going to keep it. It's one of the first luxury bags I went into a store and bought um, for myself. And I really, for sentimental reasons, I really love that bag. Um, I carried it on some of the first international trips that I went. I went to Africa for the first time when I went um, to Eastern Europe for the first time. So I love, I have a lot of love for that Gucci Soho bag, but I knew I wanted a new red bag that wasn't like beat up the way that one is. Um, so it's up in the closet, but I'm not gonna take it down right now. So I, when I saw the red one of this in the store um, in Paris, I bought it. I did not buy it. I did not go to the Loewe flagship store. I didn't have time. I only was in Paris for a day and a half. So I went to a Louis Vuitton exhibit and when I was finished going to the Louis Vuitton exhibit, I went across the street. There's this big um, store. It's like a high end like Neiman Marcus and they have boutiques for all the high end um, brands are in there. And they had a, Loewe, a little Loewe boutique. So they had um, different sizes of the bag. This is the mini um, puzzle um, bag. And that's the one I bought. And they have lots of different models of this, but this one is the one I got. I really like it. Um, it has a, um, a strap in it, of course, because like I said, I don't buy bags that don't have um, crossbody straps. So it has a crossbody strap in here. Um, of course, I got rid of the stitching, but the dust bag is up there. Um, and I like it. It holds my phone, holds my compact, holds my lipstick, holds my charger. It holds a lot. It looks small, but it holds a good amount of stuff. So it works perfectly. I carried it in um, grease. And again, I got my VAT tax on it. These bags are expensive. I actually think they're really pricey for, for the size of them. Um, I like them though. I have my eye on one right now, um, but that's how I got this one. Again, I bought it in Paris, got my VAT tax back, okay? Now, I think that covers everything I bought in Paris. Now, the second way that I save money on luxury items is by shopping certain sites to get my items. Now, I have bought two items so far this season and gotten them discounted, pretty significant discounts um, because they're in season items. They're fall 2023 items. They are selling right now in Saks and Bergdorf's and um, Bloomingdale, some of them for the full price. And I was able to find them because I shop certain sites at discounts. And the three top sites, the three sites that are my favorite for shopping in season items and getting them on a discount, and I'm gonna put them on the screen, are Essence, which is spelled S-S-E-N-S-E dot -S -E com. 
The second is idolist.com. And the third is Farfetch. Those three websites I find that you can find deals on in season items and get better prices on them than what are in the, in the boutiques themselves or in the department stores. I will give you an example. I just mentioned, I just mentioned, whoop, let me fix my chair. So I just mentioned these Gucci um, sock booties, right? That I saw in Greece, didn't buy, but I couldn't stop thinking about them. I really was like, I really want those shoes. I like the heel, it's not too high. It's not, it has the logo, but you can't really, it's very subtle. So I like it a lot and they're very comfy, which is not always the case for all Gucci shoes I bought, but these are comfy. So I knew I wanted them, but I got back and this is the price they're selling for in the department store. I'm putting it on the screen. I knew I didn't want to pay that price for them, right? So what did I do? I got on the Google and I put in the exact name of the shoe and I started searching to see whether anyone had them on sale. And sure enough, oh, the other website, I'm sorry, Essence, um, Idolist, Farfetch, and Satire. And I'm putting the name Satire on the screen right now. Satire. So I went around looking for these shoes. Found them on Idolist for like 500 and something, like 570 or 580, but my size had already been sold out. They didn't have that many sizes left. So I missed that one. So I ended up searching around and I found them on Setire for this price. And that's the price I bought them for. That's a big difference between what they are currently retailing for in Gucci and what um, I got them for. Now, what I did before I bought them is I went back to Gucci. I was in Virginia in the US and I went to Gucci. I tried them on on both my feet now because the swelling had gone down so I could try them on and made sure they fit, walked around in them, made sure I liked them. After that, I went on the website, I ordered my shoes and they came in the mail. And this is not an isolated event, okay? I also saw uh, Janine, what is her name? Janae, Janae Naylor, love her, Hi Low Lux. Um, follow her on YouTube, I follow her on all social media. She has really great style in my opinion. Um, and she had these uh, Miu Miu uh, thong sandals, but she had them in the high, um, high, uh, they're like a boot. She had the high, um, the knee high version of them with the kitten heel. Now, the way my um, feet are set up since COVID, I used to wear heels all the time, but I found that since COVID, I stayed in the house for a year, didn't go into the office, didn't wear heels. My feet have not been able to tolerate um, skinny heel shoes in the same way or, or heels above two and a half inches after COVID. Don't ask me. I just know. And I also live in Mexico in a place where high heels will cause you to break your ankles, if not your neck. So I don't wear like high heels anymore, but I loved the style of the shoe. So I went online and Googled the shoe cause I just want to look at it. I want to see what, it, how much it cost. And here's a picture of the boot version. Here's a picture of the ankle version of the one that she has. And then this version came up and I got excited cause I was like, I could wear those. But again, this was the price and I knew I didn't want to pay that price. Okay. So what did I do? I got on the Google and I put the name of the shoe in there and sure enough, the shoe came up on, I believe, Idolist. If I'm wrong, I will correct it on the screen. But I believe it was Idolist that it came up on. And this is the price that it was showing up for. So y'all know I jumped on top of that and placed the order. It was either Setire or Idolist that I found it on. But once again, I swooped in and grabbed it at the lower price. Okay. And so these, here they are, here they are. I love them. I love, 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 love them. They have a, they have a block heel, which is infinitely easier for me to walk in. And, um, 
I, I've already been styling them with lots of different things. I'm gonna be wearing the hell out of these till it gets cold at night and I can't wear them here or anywhere else here in Mexico or when I visit the States for the holidays. And then y'all will see them again in the spring. Cause the thing I love about this is you can wear this in th right through the fall and then you can wear them again in the spring. So they're like a spring fall shoe. They're great and they're comfortable. And even when my, my ankle, which is much better now was still not a hundred percent because of the way it was cut and the way it held my ankle in, it didn't hurt my feet at all wearing these. I love these shoes. They're beautiful. They, I have seen some, um, dupes of them. Um, what's the company? Charles Keith had a really nice dupe, but they don't have them anymore. Um, and the other one I saw was from Jeffrey Campbell and I didn't like it. And they were dupes of the, um, the boot, the boot version. I have not seen dupes of this version. Um, so that's how I got my Mew Mew thong booties, right? I did not pay the retail price for them. I got them at a sale price right now, depending on what your situation is, even the sale price is expensive. And this is not me telling you to go out and buy something you can't afford. I, I could afford it. So I bought it, but I did not want to buy it at the retail um, price. Cause I thought there was too much also shoes do not appreciate in value, generally speaking. So, you know, this is not a shoe I'm buying to resell. I'm buying to wear it. And I, I want to pay as little as possible for it. Cause I know I'm gonna wear the hell out of it. Okay. So I got it on sale now. So that's the second way that I go about getting luxury items for less than the listed price is number one is I buy them overseas and get, um, get them at a discount with VAT taxes back. And two is that I go online and I look for them to see if they're on sale anywhere. And nine times out of 10, I will find them on one of those websites that I mentioned. Farfetch is another one. Farfetch is more hit or miss nowadays. I find, I feel like back in the day, cause I've been doing this for years and years and years and years, ever since I started buying luxury items, I've gotten really great, um, items on essence as well. I got some beautiful Fendi. Um, I got my Fendi waist bag on there. I got, um, some other items from them at a discount prices. I've gotten, um, some Fendi pumps on Farfetch. I got a couple of pairs of Fendi pumps on Farfetch again, discount prices. And they were always in season. They weren't like last season shoes and they were in the beginning or the middle of the season, not the end of the season. Cause come January time, February, like holidays. And after the holidays, a lot of these things, especially shoes and some bags, not all of them will go on sale. Like for example, Louis Vuitton doesn't have sales. Hermes doesn't have sales. There's just no such thing. So I'm going to get to the third way that I go about getting some of those kinds of items. If I don't buy them directly from the store. Right. But certain brands do have sales like Gucci has sales, but they usually will only contact, um, regular loyal customers. Like I was, someone reached out to me recently from a Gucci store that I've, I've shopped at and let me know that some things were on sale and she sent me screenshots of everything that was on sale. And if I wanted to get something, she would have, um, you know, shipped it, but I didn't really love anything that she sent to me. So Gucci definitely has sale, but they're not loud sales. They're quiet sales. Um, and they have sales in the stores in Europe as well, which is how websites like Idolist and Satire and all of them source these things directly from these brands. And then they just sell them at a discount in season. Right. So I just go on Google and I put in the name of the thing that I'm looking for. And before I just go to Saks or one of these places and give them all my money, I see if I can get them, um, at a discount. So I'm not gatekeeping. I just want you to know that's how I do it. Now, the third thing that I do is I buy secondhand. Oh, I just realized one of my favorite things that I bought this summer and I got VAT taxes back. I didn't show you guys. I am remiss. I should show it to you because I love it so much. This is what I bought myself for my 55th birthday. I bought it in Florence. Is she not the most beautiful? It's my first Chanel. It's a Chanel mini. I really don't like the big Chanel's cause I'm a little person. I'm only five feet tall, five one. Um, don't forget the one. Give me, don't, I gotta keep all my inches, but I didn't, I, I don't like the big, big bag. Um, I really would like to get a black medium double flap, um, Chanel. Uh, but I want the vintage one, the car from Carl Lagerfeld's years with the brand. So I have my eye out for one of those and I know how much I want to spend on it. So that's what I'm looking for. And I'm hoping 
to get myself one of those for my birthday next year, 2024, God willing. I have met my bag limit for the year. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Um, but this is the other bag that I got VAT taxes back on uh, that I bought in, in uh, Florence. Now, the third way that I go about buying bags that I really want and that I like is that I um, buy them secondhand. I buy pre-loved bags. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I highly recommend it, especially here's the thing. These bags are not in everyone's price range by any means, whether they're re whether you pay retail or even secondhand. But if there are in your price range and you either just don't want to pay retail or they're in your price range, if you can get them for, let's say a thousand dollars or less, but you can't spend a thousand or two thousand dollars or more for a bag, the secondhand market is the way to go. And like I said, most of these brands do not appreciate very well. I will tell you the ones that, in my opinion, do resell well because I've had every bag under the sun except Hermes. Hermes is the only bag I've never owned. And I'm not sure that I want one, but I digress. Um, I think I might like, there's a particular one that I want, but it's not the um, Kelly or the, what's the other one, Birkin? It's another one and I can't remember the name of it. I just know what it looks like and I really liked it when I saw it. But I don't expect that I'm going to own an Hermes bag anytime soon. But anyway, but the only way I would get one is if I got it secondhand through secondhand market. But I do like to buy certain bags, vintage bags. Like my first um, Louis Vuitton bag was secondhand. My second Louis Vuitton bag was secondhand. I didn't buy a Louis Vuitton from the store till 2016, 2015. I had a Felici pochette which I just put up for sale on the real real. If you're interested in seeing what I'm selling on the real real, there are a couple of items that are still left and I have them linked in the description. Um, but Louis Vuitton is one of my favorite brands. Why? Because it's an iconic brand. I love the monogram ever since I was, I was young. I really wanted one. Now I own several of them, but it just never gets gold going into the store and buying one. Um, but right now I kind of have all the ones that I've ever had my eye on that I wanted. So I'm not really in the market for anything. And I, re I bought a Vuitton bag this year and I bought it pre-loved. And the reason why is that it was a vintage bag. It was a bag that I wanted when I was younger in my 30s. Yes, I'm satisfying the desires of my heart from back then when I couldn't you know, afford it. Um, and I bought one from the Real Real and I'll show it to you. This is the backpack from Vuitton and I'll put the name on the screen that I have wanted for years and years and years and years. And I wanted a very specific model. I wanted, you know, there's one that has part um, leather and part um, fabric straps. I wanted the one with the full leather strap that looks exact. This is the exact model that I've wanted. I've wanted this for a very, very long time. It's not, they don't make this particular backpack anymore. So the only way you can get it is to get it vintage, right? I only shop for handbag, secondhand handbags from a handful of places. The places that I buy secondhand handbags from is the Real Real. Um, fashion file and uh, Vestalier, right? Those are three places I've actually bought bags. I've actually resold bags from them and they were authentic because, you know, you resell a bag and they check it. They'll tell you if it's not real or not. I've had very bad experiences with eBay. So I will not buy a handbag. Even though I know eBay now has an authentication process and Poshmark the same, I won't buy bags from them. I, I feel like Fashion File, The Real Real, even though The Real Real has had their own problems, but The Fashion File, The Real Real, um, and Vestalaire, I like Vestalaire, are places that I buy um, pre-loved bags from. Um, I also like what goes around. I mean, I, I like what goes around, comes around. I like what they have, but I feel that they're expensive. I feel that they're more expensive than the ones that I've mentioned. The reason is what goes around comes around tends to carry not just vintage items, but really specialty items like special edition bags um, that came out 15, 20 years ago. So they tend to, and they tend to just price their bags on the high side. But if you're looking for something really unique that's vintage, that's a place that I would say to look, right? If you know a specific thing that you're looking for, but you're gonna pay a lot for it not re retail but close to close to retail i think they're pricey so in addition to the um backpack i just showed you i think most of my 
pre-loved bags I've sold or given away. Like this year I gave my cousin my Speedy. It was pretty old. I had bought it on uh, pre-loved. It was still in very good condition, um, but it was um, pretty old. And I actually want to get a newer Speedy. There's a particular one that I want um, that I'm looking for right now. It's a vintage um, Speedy. Um, the multicolor Murakami um, Speedy that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. I've been wanting that back since I was like 32 years old. So I'm, I want to get one. So I, I'm looking for one, but there's a specific one I'm looking for. So I'm still like looking for it. Um, and I just ordered two handbags from Vestalier and I'll share those when I get them. Um, and I'll share what they are when I get them. Uh, they're two vintage bags that I've been looking for and I found them on Vestalier. And Vestalier has a very specific authentication process. So I really um, like buying stuff from them. Um, and I'm very happy about that. So the, the third way, as I said, to get um, handbags uh, and not pay full price is to buy them on the pre-loved market. So I definitely think that the pre-loved market is a great way to go for most brands. And I'll tell you right now that I think that especially for brands like um, YSL, um, Fendi, and so on, I would actually say don't pay retail for it because they don't really hold their value very well in terms of reselling. I would say if there's something you have your eye on from one of those, wait a couple months, wait a year, get it, um, pre, you know, get it on the pre-loved market. Don't pay full price because if you buy it full price and you decide you want to sell it, you're not necessarily going to get a good price. I was very disappointed with the resale prices I've gotten on my Fendi's when I've resold them. I've gotten really good prices on Gucci. I've gotten good return on my investment on Louis Vuitton, like excellent return on investment on Louis Vuitton, but not on, um, Fendi love Fendi still buy it because I like it. There's certain things I like, but I won't buy any more Fendi bags. Um, I broke that rule this year cause I was looking for a particular thing, but I regretted it cause I know if I ever decide to sell this bag that I bought this year, I bought this, um, little purse, basically a wallet on a, on a thing kind of replacing the Felici. My, my Vuitton Felici was basically just like this. And I sold that one. And I got this Fendi one and I like it, but I know that I'm, if I sell it, I'm probably not going to get a very good return on the investment. I will not buy any more Fendi bags, um, retail. Um, I will, I, and Gucci, I try to buy overseas. Like I, I lapsed in Vegas. I just, I shopped in Vegas. I, I'm not gonna lie, but generally that was the first time I bought a purse in the States in a while. I usually buy um, them overseas. So I generally try to buy bags overseas because I just feel like it's a better way to go. Or like I said, if it's something I really, really want, then I try to get it on one of those websites. But I try not to go into the store and buy it because, you know, most of them are not going to keep their value unless you're buying like a specialty item that's something really unique or different. Um, then you might be able to resell it and get a good return on the investment. But Fendi and um, some of these other brands that aren't Hermes, the brands that you can always resell and get a good return on your investment are Vuitton, Hermes, Chanel. Like my, um, my Louis Vuitton bum bag that I bought is reselling right now for more than what I paid for it. I mean, I literally was on the website today looking at it because I needed a graphic for a video I just did about my waist bags and the bag is retailing for more than what I paid when I bought it. So the same for another, um, Vuitton bag that I have that I'll, I'm going to do a video about because I love the bag, but I hardly ever carry the bag, but I still won't sell it because I love it so much. So I'm gonna do a video about the bag. I love the most that I never carry. Um, and it's a, and it's a Vuitton bag, but it's also selling for more than what I bought it for. Cause I bought some of these bags when they initially came out, they were one price, but Vuitton and Chanel, Chanel is notorious for this. I think Chanel has raised the prices on some of their bags like three times in the last year, some craziness like that. Um, Vuitton has done price increases, not as crazy as 
Chanel, but they've also done a lot of price increases on their most popular bags. So they're actually more now than when I actually uh, bought a lot of these bags. And so um, keeping them, if you decided you want to, if I decide I want to resell my um, bag and it's in excellent condition, then I would actually be getting more than what I bought it for. So that's an excellent investment. Same thing with Hermes, same thing with Chanel, right? So those three brands, if you can, you can, if you can make the investment, you can actually get a good return on your investment. But the other ones, you're not going to, including Gucci, unless it's a specific particular purse, right? You might, but it depends. But generally speaking, you might get close to what you pay, but you're not going to get over what you paid. And in most cases, you're going to get 25, 30% less than what you paid, or even less than that if it's Fendi. Don't even get me started about things like Coach and all that. You know, those are not investment pieces. Those are just bags that you're buying because you're not going to, you know, a lot of them won't, won't even, they can't even be resold except on eBay, um, person to person. So just be aware that if you're buying, these bags as investment pieces versus just to keep them and have them and love them, then be careful about what you're investing in and do look at buying your things on the pre-loved market so that you're not paying um, retail. Cause there are actually some popular brands that are already on the pre-loved market, but some of them are being sold for more than what they are in the store. For example, the Gucci horse bit, which is very popular right now, the new one, people are like on the pre-loved market trying to sell those things for more than what they are in the store, which I would never pay. Um, so, you know, just do your homework before you spend the money, know what it's, what it's retailing for. And honestly, if you really want the bag and they're selling it, unless the bag is sold out everywhere and you can't get it. And I would just say, wait, cause it'll come back most of the time. Um, but don't pay more than the retail for sure. In my opinion, unless it's Chanel or one of the ones I just mentioned and, um, you can use one of the methods that I just mentioned in this video to get a bag that you really like, um, but not pay retail for it. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was informative. Um, tell me in the comments if it was, if it was helpful. Um, I have some other videos planned around my bag collection that are coming up. If there's particular things that you would like me to make a video about or talk about, um, drop it in the comments and let me know. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was fun. Um, I'll be making more videos, as I said, about, um, my style and fashion, as well as continue to do video content about all my travel adventures. Um, so I hope you continue to tune in and follow me for all of that content. Thanks for being here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.